Coach, great to have you. I got to start with you here. What percent was that Suggs shot luck? And what percent was skill? Well, naturally, because it was from nearly half court, uh, the percentages are not as great. But his mechanics are solid in terms of being on balance, in terms of holding his follow through. Uh, the rotation on the ball was excellent, coming off the middle three fingers, the pronation in the wrist, and uh, he banked it straight on. So, uh, yes, it was a difficult shot, uh, but similar to a field goal kicker uh, that's farther out, the percentages aren't as great, but the mechanics were there. Or in hockey or soccer, a shot on goal, uh, what makes it remarkable is the distance, and obviously to win the game uh, makes it even more dramatic and memorable. But wait a second, Coach. Did he try to bank the shot? Was that the goal of the shot, was to hit of the course. backboard first? Yeah, in that situation, as you know, uh, under duress, the seconds ticking down, uh, what was at stake? Uh, your goal is to get to a place, being aware of the time, and get that shot off. And what impressed me, it wasn't as though it was some crazy heave. I mean, he had his legs under him. It speaks to his strength. And the mechanics carried the day, a basketball, a game of habits. And, uh, it led to this compelling game-winning shot. Um, the mechanics and the fundamentals were there. Now, of course, the distance uh, makes it, you know, spectacular uh, and, uh, and less likely to happen. But uh, that's what makes it memorable. Coach, as being a former coach, how many times did you put your guys through the clock's winding down, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and you put them on different spots of the court? Obviously, layups, they can make a layup, but obviously, but uh, at some point in time during the course of practice, you're counting down to win a game, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. How many times would you say you've done that in your coaching career? Yeah, you do it as a child, obviously growing up on the playground, and uh, you do set up situations in practice, so you're more familiar. Matter of fact, when I was an assistant, 95, won the national championship uh, twice a week at the minimum. We worked on length of the court, ball handling, uh, being able to beat the clock under five seconds, and then it led to Ty Sedney against Missouri up in Boise, Idaho, uh, making that mad dash to continue our run to eventually a national championship. Jim Herrick was the head coach at that time, but we had practiced that situation and knew Tyus was capable of doing it because of his handles, his speed, and uh, of course there are reads. You've got to be able to read the defense. And in certain situations, you kick it if you're double teamed, uh, but Tyus in that case took it the length of the court. So you do work on time and score late game situations as a coach. So there's a familiarity and a comfort level when you get in that situation in the game. But let's not kid ourselves. Uh, that was just a spectacular supernatural play by Jalen Suggs will be the one, two, or three pick in the upcoming draft. And uh, you got to have that, like a Joe Montana rolling out of the pocket, finding Dwight Clark in that NFC championship against Dallas. Skip knows a thing or two about that. Mm, uh, I do. But I also <laughs> know a thing or two about lucky shots. And for me, this was 95% <laughs> luck. I give you mechanics. I give you the skill involved. But a lot of the kids could, going full speed, get the ball to the backboard from that spot. He did have a defender who got David Singleton, who sort of crossed his path and, and bothered him a little bit. So I'm going to give him some credit in the skill level of being able to shoot the shot and get it away cleanly to at least get it up to the backboard. But that shot, because it's shot from an angle, had to be about a foot wide right, and it had to be about a foot long to bang off the backboard and go through the hoop like that. So to me, even Mark Few said after the game, that was a lucky shot. Later, Mark Few said, I was happy Jalen was about to shoot it because to your, your point, Steve, he, he has, he's got March magic to him. He, he is the, their it kid for that team. So I get that. You can maybe say he willed it in off the backboard. I just don't think he aimed the shot at the backboard to begin with. Yeah, you know, it makes us think back to Christian Leitner against Kentucky. You know, the timing of having to get the catch and then turn and have the proper mechanics in terms of the footwork, the feet facing the basket, therefore your shoulders, and you end up taking an on-balance shot. Now, Leitner wasn't as far away from the basket as Suggs, and that's what makes Suggs' shot more remarkable and more memorable. And there's no doubt, when you look at national championships runs, uh, the runs through the history 
of the NCAA, the national championship run usually includes a buzzer beating shot, whether it was Chris Jenkins for Villanova, Tyus Edney for UCLA, Leitner for Duke. And uh, here we have one with Suggs as the championship lines up for Gonzaga. Now Baylor has something to say about that tonight. Okay, so coach, speaking of Baylor, Shannon's got Gonzaga. He he bet me he took Gonzaga versus the field. I'm very impressed. My field has dwindled to one team. I guess it's the team to have if you got the field in Baylor. But what shot do you give Baylor to pull off the upset tonight? I think they have uh, an excellent shot. I do lean slightly towards Gonzaga. It just seems to be their season. They've been the one consistent element in college basketball this year. And with the COVID conditions, Pretty remarkable from start to finish that Gonzaga has played at this high level. But Baylor uh, has excellent guards. And you look at Butler and Mitchell, um, as good as it gets. And the quickness of this Baylor team uh, can cause some problems uh, for Gonzaga. Uh, they get on the boards well. Uh, and uh, it's a team that learned from their setbacks. Uh, they had a couple losses, but I think that's helped them. And uh, they're playing at a high level. Uh, my only concern, if you're a Gonzaga fan, is did the Zags use too much emotional and physical fuel in that knockdown drag out game against UCLA? And also, does the undefeated factor play a part in terms of maybe the weight of the world being on Gonzaga's back? To this point, to Mark Few's credit and the makeup, the nature, the personality of this Zag team is such that they haven't played with any uptightness. Uh, they've been loose, aggressive, and uh, Jalen Suggs, the freshman, uh, just leading this team. And we've seen great players, great point guards do this before. You go back to Jason Kidd or didn't win it, uh, but made a great run with Cal or Magic Johnson at Michigan State. Mike Bibby uh, was an underclassman uh, at Arizona in 97 when they cut down the nets. And Jalen Suggs is in that kind of rare air, just a special talent. And uh, that's really what I think separates this Gonzaga team from any prior Gonzaga teams. There have been some great ones, but Jalen Suggs is that good. So, Coach, if, if in fact Gonzaga will slightly prevail here, how high will the score get? Could, could we see a team go over 100? It's possible, uh, but I think this game's going to be in the 80s or 90s. I was impressed that the score was as high as it was in the UCLA Gonzaga game because UCLA controls the tempo well. They're 337th in college basketball at playing in a more deliberate uh, pace. And yet uh, they were able to get up and down the floor against UCLA and put up big numbers. So I expect uh, this to be a high scoring game. And if you look at the numbers, uh, you know, Baylor, you know, doesn't score at the level that Gonzaga does. Gonzaga is 89 points per game on the year. And Baylor 78, so I think it'll be somewhere right in between playing the 80s, but it could get to the 90s, depending on how hot the shooting is from behind the arc tonight. But I think when you look at the game, Coach, is that both teams, UCLA and Gonzaga, shot over 57%. And normally, teams were 97, win percentage is 97% when a team shoots 57% from the floor and get to the line. So UCLA played as well as they could possibly play, and it still wasn't good enough. So how much above do you think Baylor have to play above their heads in order to beat Gonzaga? Yeah, it's a fine line. They're going to have to play at a magic level to beat Gonzaga, and yet you can't approach it that way. You know, okay. you have to approach it like you do every game, even though we know it's the biggest game of the year. Right. I think the key in preparation, as you know, uh, as an athlete, as a coach, is that drum roll and doing what you do best. And uh, they've done well enough to get to this championship game. There's no reason to depart from their style, their system of play. And um, they are a really good team. Uh, it won't be a shocker by any means if Baylor ends up winning tonight, in particular because of the fuel tank. I'm curious to see where Gonzaga's you know, energy level is uh, emotionally and physically. Will they be as fresh and on point uh, to get this win tonight? Or will Baylor have an edge in that regard because they're coming off a game where they won comfortably and uh, didn't have to expend the degree of energy emotionally or physically that, you, that, uh, that Gonzaga did? So how does Baylor deal with Drew Timmy because nobody else has been able to? You know, I think uh, with Timmy, one of the keys is before he gets the ball playing defense, use your quickness, your length, 
and meet him early. Easier said than done in terms of shutting him down. He's going to get his points. But I think you want to make him have to step out a little bit farther from his comfort zone, the operational area. He's accustomed to uh, catching the ball and uh, just try and limit his touches. Uh, easier said than done, but Baylor has that type of quickness. Also, the pressure on the ball, very important, just like getting the quarterback in football. Uh, if they, Baylor can pressure Gonzaga, not allow them to have free looks or the window shot uh, over their defense, then that goes a long way to disrupting the timing and the rhythm of the Gonzaga offense. But again, back to guards, you know, uh, Kispert, Ayayi, uh, and Suggs, uh, those three are dynamic. I think really that's what we're going to see tonight are the two best backcourts in the country because Baylor's backcourt as well uh, is lights out. I mean, Butler and Mitchell are a dynamic duo. And finally, Coach, Davion Mitchell for Baylor is, to me, the best perimeter defender in the country, and I assume he's going to be on Suggs much of the night. Who, who wins that battle? Well, interestingly, you know, don't be surprised if, you know, Mark Few elects to mix his defenses some, and uh, they do some switching as well to give opponents different looks, and you don't necessarily have to put Suggs on the opposing team's best player, uh, particularly in the first half. You may want to save some of that as a different look in the second half because you want to keep Suggs out of foul trouble and on the floor because if he goes out, uh, then suddenly this Gonzaga's team's chances of winning are greatly diminished. Um, so uh, I think it is a great matchup, and uh, Baylor's defense is underrated. Uh, they can disrupt, unnerve, discombobulate opponents with their length, foot speed, and quickness, and it'll be the quickest team that Gonzaga has faced this season, without a doubt. And it's tough to simulate speed and quickness in practice. You can watch it on game film, uh, but like everyone that has a plan until they get punched in the face, I think it was Mike Tyson said that quote, and uh, Baylor really does have electrifying athleticism and speed. But if Gonzaga can neutralize, offset that, still execute and play in a comfortable uh, fashion in terms of choosing when to run and run to when to when to uh, execute on the half court. That I think the Zags have a narrow edge. I believe for the first time in 45 years since that 1976 Indiana team, we're going to have an undefeated national champion. Wow! wow Kent Benson, wow, Quinn wow. Cook, Mike Wilson, Skip. You remember them? Do I? Mm. <laughs> yeah, and what a great story! You know, Incredible here they are story. in Indianapolis, and only an hour away from Indiana, the Hoosiers' campus, where uh, they played their games and went undefeated under Bobby Knight that season. Nobody would have expected this team. There have been a lot of teams: the UNLV, the Kentucky team, that come with undefeated. Nobody mm -hmm. would have thought it would be this team. Don't forget Coach Wooden's four undefeated teams. Back yeah, we, yeah, we talked about this right. 76. We, we <laughs> this tournament has been so, so special. I cannot wait to see how it plays out tonight. Coach, it was great to have you join us. Thank you so much for your insight. Enjoy this one tonight, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say about it tomorrow. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on episode. FS1.